So next Monday, April 4th, we're getting together Monday night at 6.30 in the back in Halabria. And also, um, if you are planning to go to the spring conference, which is April 30th, we need to register in the next two weeks by April 11th. So that information's in the back, or you can see me after service. And I'm gonna pass it to Pastor Ben. In your bulletins, you have a little uh, card in there that says, Welcome to City Limits, Guest Information. If this is your first time, please fill it out, put it in the box that we have in the back in the foyer. And those of you that change address or phone numbers, refill it out, and please, we'd like to stay in touch with you. So that way you know what's happening at City Limits. We want you to be involved with us. And we praise the Lord for all of us being here this morning, this Amen. wonderful morning. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our outreach is yeah. coming up. Yeah. July 27th to yeah. June 27th to July 1st. Praise the Lord. Be praying about that. And we also want to get our t-shirts in early this time. So if everybody wants a t-shirt and would like to have it. There's a sign-up sheet. If not, see Jen, Jennifer. You want to stand up and let them see you? Woo! There you go. Yeah. And give her your name. Uh, one more thing. We thank for all the volunteers that are helping us with Children's Church as well as with the nursery. Now. We have enough people, but now we need some for Wednesday night. Some of us make it Wednesday night and some of us don't. But I pray that those that make it, somebody will volunteer to help with the children's church as well as the nursery. So any volunteers, the sheets are still up there. Put down for Wednesday night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's about all I have except one little note from the Lord. Amen. This is an exciting weekend. All the families are gathering together. Don't let the enemy cause trouble. When you sit upon that table, and when you're ready for the food, and the head of the house gives the blessing, may the head of the house remember to say, the enemy is not allowed here. We will fellowship as family Praise and God. in love. Yes. Amen. And in love. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let me just say one thing I have left. Father, this morning and throughout the day, bless every family and every person that is here this morning. May you fill them with your presence and let them know, Lord, you are there. And let the anointing of your word touch each and every one of us, oh Lord, that when we leave here, we leave here charged up, knowing that you are our Savior. You are our life, yes. and you are the very air we breathe. For we ask you now, Lord, let your water flow and fill us with that refreshing water of life. We give you honor and glory, and we praise you and celebrate your resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen.
I want two or three people to stand up. I just want you to pray freely. And, and, and this is what I want you, I want you to pray a specific prayer. Pray that God will touch our hearts and that he will use us and that he will use this word to fill our hearts today and to answer some questions for us. Amen? Amen. To answer. Give us answers. I need a couple people. Just as God leads you, you stand and just pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you humbly, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to love you, to learn uh, concepts and precepts that, that you're bringing forth through our past. I pray that you bless him, anoint him, Lord, that that word that you bring forth, Lord, would change us, that we would come to the realization that every action, every, every, every time that we're connected with you, whether it's through your word or in prayer, that it would change us, change our hearts and change our minds, Lord, that, that we would uh, minister to others, Lord, and as we minister to others and minister to you, Lord, that you would uh, uh, continuously help us to be the, the people that you called us to be. We pray this, Lord, for your glory only, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Amantísimo Padre, Señor, te damos las gracias por este día, Señor. Te damos las gracias, Señor, porque tú mandaste a tu único Hijo, Señor, para que tomara, Señor, nuestro lugar en la cruz del Calvario, Señor Padre, para nosotros y para que nuestros pecados, Señor, fueran limpiados, Señor Padre Jesús. Señor, te pido que tú abras cada uno de nuestros corazones, Señor, en este día, Señor Padre. Que tú hablan de esos corazones, Señor Padre, que cada una de las personas, Señor, que entraron a este lugar, Señor, y esos cuales están aquí, Señor Padre, que no traen entendimiento de ti, de tu palabra, Señor, que conozcan de ti, Señor, y que salgan de aquí, Señor Padre, con, con esas preguntas, Señor Padre, que, que vienen, Señor, sean vacíos, Señor Padre, que no salgan de aquí vacíos, Señor, que salgan llenos con entendimiento, Señor, de tu palabra, Señor, y que lleven esa palabra, Señor, que esa semillita sea sembrada en su corazón, Señor Padre, y que la lleven, Señor Padre, y que sepan, Señor, cuál sea el próximo paso, Señor Padre, para que esa semilla siga creciendo, Señor, y que se haga su voluntad en su vida, Señor. Te damos las gracias, Señor Padre, por todo lo que tú has hecho y lo que tú continúas a hacer, Señor, y la palabra que tú has traído para cada uno de tus siervos en este día. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Grateful hearts, so Lord God. I just thank you for, Father God, for another day sober, Father God. Father God, I thank you for, for the Timothy house, Lord God. I thank you for, for putting it in Pastor's heart, Father God, to, to, to open up a place like that for guys like us, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you all just cover us, Father God, to guide our steps, Lord God. That, that what a beautiful thing, Father God. To, to, the only requirement, the, the main priority in that house is to seek you, Father God, and I thank you for that, Lord yeah. God. Anything else, Father God, I thank you for giving us, giving me my life back, Father God. Amen. Anything else is great, Lord, it's extra, and I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Would you come up here? I want you to pray for me now, right? I have 729 notes, and I don't know what to do with them. Dear God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this day and what it means to all of us, God. And God, right now, I just pray your anointing upon my pastor, God. I God, God, I pray right now that you just allow the words to come out, yes. Father God, and touch our hearts into, into a way that will change our lives yes. forever, God. Let everything we do today be a service to you. As later as we go with our families and spend time with you, let us be a reflection of you to those who don't know you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Hey, hey, anybody here ever been misunderstood? <laughs> right? You are misunderstood? There, there was this guy, he wanted to start a business, he had a friend, and, and so he says to his friend, he said, look, look, if you give me 50 grand, I'm going to go to England, because they just started, this is in the early 1800s, and they just started learning how to do flushable toilets. So, so they were putting, they were putting all these bathrooms in. Said, if you give me fifty grand, I'll go there and start a business, and we're going to be on fire. We can make this stuff here, and then we can ship it over there, and and so it's fine. So, he gets the man's money and he leaves. 
He leaves his partner. When he goes there, one week goes by, two weeks go by, three weeks go by, he hears nothing. Then he finally gets a telegraph and says, ship sinks. And he was bummed out. His whole world died. It was like, oh my goodness. Like, you know, uh, it's all over. All my money's gone. All my investment's gone. I'm never going to get anything, right? Okay, is everybody following me? Are you there? <laughs> About 10 months later, the guy shows up in the neighborhood and his friend sees him and he wants to rip his head off. He wants to rip his head off. He says to him, well, what happened, man? You stole my money. I want my money back. What happened? He says, what are you talking about? He says, I want my money back, man. He says, that was everything I had saved for my house. I lost everything because of it. He said, I lost everything too. He said, because you didn't come through with your word. He said, I didn't come through with my word. He said, yeah, I sent you a telegram. I said, ship the saints. I'm going to put them in. I got the business. <laughs> ship sinks ship the sinks already man anybody follow me ship the sinks ship sinks send them anybody follow me this, that's, that's, that's a, a kind of a dumb story but isn't it one where you could misunderstand mess you up it'll, it, it'll make you misunderstand I want you to go to the book of, of uh, Mark as we know that Mark is one of the ones he loved. Mark loved the miracles, man. Thank you, Father. Bless this time we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 6. Happy Resurrection Day, City Limits. Happy Resurrection Day, friends. If it's your first time here, your second or third time, or if you've now filled out a name card, please fill it out. Put your phone number down. We're not going to send you any Tupperware announcements or just, we just going to love on you, all right? You may get a text from me. Amen? It says, but he said to them, Jesus, just taking a portion of scripture, but he said to them, do not be alarmed, for you see Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. The place where they laid him was empty. And so here you have all these people all the disciples, all the people who witnessed his crucifixion. Everybody follow me say amen on me, my or is this something? Just let me know you're with me, all right? And so they finally are all gathered around and they're scared. They saw the crucifixion. It was a horrible night. It was a horrible, it was Good Friday it was only for us, but for him it was a horrible night. And something happened. If Jesus touches your life, there is an impact. Come There's on. your sermon title. Come on. There is an impact if Jesus touches you. There will be an impact. There will be DNA. There will be proof that he was there. Amen? Many of us have known somebody famous. Maybe some of us have run into somebody, a mayor, or somebody, a senator, somebody famous, or maybe a rapper or something, you know, and... and and, uh, and, and if you get to shake their hand or something, or if you get them to sign a book or maybe a record for you, an out record, anybody know what that is anymore? <laughs> a CD, if they sign a CD for you, you get to say, wow, man, what a sweet thing. Sometimes there's something you'll never, how many of you ever met somebody, somebody important, somebody special, somebody you thought was like, wow, they're, okay, only a few, but some of you know me. <laughs> I rebuke myself right now. I humble myself. But when you run into somebody that you've never met before, that, that has got some stature, it makes you feel like, wow. I mean, imagine that a Nicky Cruz is outside when you go outside and he's signing books for you. Free. To sign them. You get to shake his hand and take a picture with him. Is that going to be a memory that you're going to forget? No, right? And the same thing ought to be with Jesus. When Jesus touches you, Amen. there ought to be a moment, yes. a time, a second, an hour, yes. something where yes. you will yes. never forget. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. There should be an impact on your life. Yes. Come on. I want to give you some statistics here. Are you ready? Yes. Socrates. Socrates. I don't know if you know him. It has nothing to do with playing soccer. This was a philosopher. 
very smart man. Socrates taught for 40 years. Plato taught for, not Plato, but Plato taught for 30 years. Who's the other big wig? Socrates, Plato, Aristotle taught for 40 years. They had great influence on how we thought about the world, about man, about the sky, about stars, about how they move, all these things. Combined, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, they taught about 130 years. They've written so many books about them, for those of you that know. People who go to college have to read these guys all the time. Now, Jesus Come on now. Come on. only taught for three years. Hallelujah. And we're still talking about it. talking about every man woman and child smart not smart half smart part of we're still talking about it. you follow me socrates and plato and all these people have all these all these books and all these theories all these philosophies but jesus only talked for three years half that time he was running walking or doing had no bus pass right and no horse no ponies and yet for three years, can you imagine somebody would have an, if, 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 if you don't take Jesus serious today, you just think of that. Of all the people who have written anything, Jesus only taught three years. Wow. And we're still talking about it. Yeah. 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 Follow me? Yeah. So what happens when Jesus touches your life? John chapter 20. Verses 19 through 22. John 20, 19 through 22. If you have it up there, the ASB of Understand Version uh, Bible. Somebody shout that text again. John 20, 19 through 22. John 20, 19 through 22. Amen. Come on, somebody, help me out of the tower. Okay? Amen. It says this. Okay, everybody got their Bible study. Somebody say, Amen. 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 Cool, you're so good to see you, man. Amen. So good to see you. I, I'm going to... I... Man, man, when I grow up, I'm going to have a hairdo like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I've been noticing I have hairbrushes, and now they just give me a wash. I'll say... I said, Debbie, I need, uh, I need a hairbrush. And she hands me a washcloth. <laughs> Church is like, what's this for? She says, wash, just, just wash it. Well, follow me. You have to laugh. Whenever you laugh around here, it's a reason. Amen. Amen. I make you laugh. And, ha, ha, ha. You open up. Ha, ha. You open up. And, ha, ha. and that's what it looks. <laughs> so when therefore it was evening on that day the first day of the week and when the doors were shut where the disciples were the doors were shut he said go to Jerusalem and wait for me wait for my instructions he didn't say go pick out anybody cast lots do anything he didn't say to be in one accord, to be in one Honda, a twin. He didn't say none of that. He just said, go wait for me in Jerusalem until I send the promise of my Father. Amen? Amen? And when the doors, they were shut, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. For, come on, somebody say, say, for fear of the Jews. They were scared. They were scared. Now, listen, they were scared of the Romans. They were scared of the Jews. They were scared of everybody. They had heard every story out there. They stole him. They took him in the middle of the night. He's gone from here. Somebody lifted him. Now they're going to say he resurrected. Look at this slide. We're going to get these people. Anybody that looks like they're Jesus people, and we're going to get them. It says that Jesus, listen, for fear of the Jews, that Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace. Be unto you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Pause. Peace. 
Whatever your problem is today, bring peace. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Just have peace. Amen. Put everything you have on the back burner. So give me an hour. An hour. I studied a week for this. Give me an hour. Okay? But anything that you might be dealing with, any anger, any stress, any anxiety, peace doesn't give you anxiety. Peace doesn't give you hurt. Peace doesn't give you shame. Peace doesn't make you judge. Peace doesn't make you be hurtful towards other things. I think violent. Peace doesn't do that. So, so he walks into a room where all these guys are like, are scared. Oh my, oh my Lord. Did you see the way he looked? Yeah, did you see the way he looked when they took him off? Did you see how he looked? Oh my goodness, and we had to wrap him up and he was just all covered up all over his body. They stabbed him, they, they pierced him, they put crowns, he had blood in his eyes and all over. Did you see what happened to him? And now, and now all these Jews are coming after us saying, those are the guys that stole him. His disciples, they did it, find them. So for fear, they're hiding out in a room. You follow me? And Jesus says, peace be unto them. He says, peace be unto you. Again, a second time, Jesus repeats himself unto them, his hands and his sides. The disciples were therefore glad. Now they got glad. And when they had saw, saw the Lord and Jesus, he therefore said unto them, peace be unto you. Again, amen. And I wanted to show you that the Holy Spirit kind of dropped a bomb on my heart this morning when I was reading this again. It's like, what's Jesus giving? He gave us a command. Go and make uh, disciples of all nations, right? That's his greatest thing. He didn't say walk night. He didn't say make sure that your time matches on Sunday. Make sure. I, I don't care how you come into church as long as you don't come and make it. Right? Yeah. Just, just come to church. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Just, just get here. Amen. Right? Amen. But, but, but we think that, that all the commands of God are how you do things, what you do, how you say them, how you act, and all this stuff. Listen, listen. He left a command. Go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah. Now here, he comes into them. Just listen to me. He had already died. After his death, he comes back. After his resurrection, he shows up to a bunch of scared people in a room. Come on. And says, peace be with you. Right. Like, what? what? Peace. <laughs> okay. You got that, John? We get chill. Peace be, peace be on you. And, and they said, look. But let me prove it to you. In case you're like, 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 who is this guy? You know, I mean, my goodness, he looks like he's healed. You know, look, it's just. And it says that when they saw, they were happy. Then he repeats it again. Peace, peace. Come on, is that what you needed? Proof. Peace be unto you. Then he adds something that I want you to see. He adds something. He says, "Peace be unto you, as the Father has sent me." So send I you. Amen. If you are confused about what you're going to do, if you're confused about your call, if you're confused about what happens next, just as God the Father sent me, I am now telling you this is your marching order. So send I you. Get ready to go. You're not going to be hiding in no room. There's not going to be no fear overtaking you. I need you to get ready to go. And tell people, I saw yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus showed up to me. On, I don't care what you can argue, anything you want. Yeah. But my Jesus showed himself to me. Yeah. 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 Preach that thing. Yeah. Woo. You with me? Yeah. So when he showed himself to them, he had a what? Say impact. Impact. Anybody ever been in a car accident? Yes. Yeah. That's an impact. Yeah. Come on. You follow me? It's impact. Something that changes you. Yeah. Something that can stress you. Something that can, it can be hard. It can, it can hit you hard. And I believe that's what happened to them. It hit them hard that Jesus is saying, you know, just as the Father, my Father, our Father sent me, now I'm sending you. I wonder what God wants me to do. Go! I wonder if my call, I haven't figured out. Go! I, I, I've been trying to see, oh, Rabbi is it, is it, is it, is it the prize? Go! And I wonder what I, go! And as you go, I will 
show. And three things I want to talk to you about. Three little things before we go into the impact of Jesus. Three things. The first thing is this. Jesus shows up when things are hopeless. Amen. Can't like that. It can't get no worse than this. Yes. Come on now. Yes. If, if you really want him to, he shows up when things are hopeless. These guys were hopeless. They were caught in that room. They saw him do miracles. Yes. They saw him raise the dead. Yes. They saw him yes. make blind people see. They saw him take with his hands. They saw him heal lepers. They saw him do all Then they saw him die. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Then they didn't see him again and they go hide in the room. Then he shows up into the room. Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody follow me about how deep that is? Yeah. The impact that that would leave on you. Come on, man. So the first thing is that he shows up just when things are the worst. Folks, it's always darkest just before the dawn. This morning I got up to take a walk because I wanted to be, listen, I didn't care if it was cloudy. I know when dawn comes. It's when it gets really dark. It's almost so dark. Then boom. You see that glimmer of light. Amen. And it begins to erase all darkness. Amen. Anybody know that? Amen. It's always dark. It's just before the dawn. If Amen. you're going through a whole bunch of stuff, Come just on. listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Yeah. Say, say, Father, 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 take it down as low as you need to take it because, yeah. because, because as soon as I hit bottom, oh, I'm coming. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Jesus shows up. Why? Number two, because he understands our struggles. Yeah. He understands our passions. He understands our hearts. He understands our fears. He understands those things that we are going through. Yeah. Those things that we're trying to navigate through yeah. in our lives, trying to work out. Do I hate him? Do I hurt him? Do I this? Do I that? Do I forgive? What do I do? Do I get them back? Is she my wife? Is she not? Do I get that? What do I do? In life, Ooh. these are children. Are they my children? Do I care? What do I do about life? What is my future going to be like? Come on. I tell you what, you start following Jesus, yes, and things are going to become so clear to you as to what you're supposed yeah. to do. Yeah. You're not going to need for money. You'll never, you will never ever go hungry. Yeah. You'll never need for anything. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Scripture. He says, I've never seen the righteous. I've never seen them begging for bread or hungry. I've never seen the righteous hungry or begging for bread. Number three, the third thing, before I go into the impact, Jesus shows up because he cares about you. When times are hopeless, things are bad, you feel like you don't understand it, God says, you know what? I'm about to show up in your life. I'm about to make an appearance Amen. in your little Amen. life. Amen. 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 If you're taking notes, I want you to write down four things. Don't you leave a space between each one. There's four things. When Jesus shows up, are you ready? Forgive me for, for a second. Resurrection word, Lord, they can be empowered to do what they need to do Amen. to live in victory. In yes. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You ready? Yes. yes. So when Jesus shows up, the first thing he's going to bring you is peace. Yeah. He tells you that peace I leave with you. Not peace as the world gives. I give you that peace that passes all understanding that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, am I correct? Yes, Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, yes. 
Anybody ever try to be thankful in the middle of a storm? Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, because, thank you, because if this is as bad as it gets, then it's only going to get better. Listen, I'm going to be walking with the Lord. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to take my humility like I have to. And God is going to have to raise me up. And God is going to do mighty things through me and in me. Amen. This is what we need, Pastor Jim. This is what we need. Glory to God. And the peace of God, verse 7, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 4, 23. Proverbs 4, 23 says this. Above all else, guard your heart for everything that you do flow from it. In some other versions, it says guard your heart. For from it flow the issues of life. The heart is deceitful in many ways. And yet the heart has, it flows all the wellspring of life. I mean, that's what it can be. If you give your heart to God, if you give your heart to peace, to the peace of God, say, God, I'm... I mean, harangued, uh, I'm sorry, that word means, I mean, pulled and yanked and driven here and there by every little drama that comes along. But I need the peace of God that stabilizes me, that stabilizes me, makes me strong. I need that peace of God. Forgive me for what I've done. Forgive those that I have ought against. Give me peace in my heart. Can you imagine them being in that room scared? And Jesus shows up. Then he shows them his hand. And then he says, you know what? It's me. Have peace. Don't you be scared of Romans. Don't be scared of Jews. Don't be scared of nobody. Even if my father sent me. And I did what I did. So said I do. Second thing, when Jesus shows up, he's going to change your perspective. Say that word, perspective. Perspective. Somebody write that down, because these kind of words are the words that I want you to, I want you to look them up, survey them, search them, see what they mean. Not no cheap Ali's dictionary, I want you to look at a real one, it's got, you know, over 50,000, 75,000 words in it. Amen? Amen. Perspective. So the first one is he gives me peace, right? God's power gives me peace. The second thing he gives me is he gives me perspective. Ship sinks, I told you, right? Ship sinks. And the perspective was, oh my goodness, his ship is gone. He's dead. I lost all my money. And the guy comes back. I was waiting. What did you do? I said, ship sinks. Ship sinks. I'm ready for sinks. Funny but true. So when Jesus shows up, he gives you a new perspective. Until the resurrection appearance, all these guys, they were believing every lie that was circulated. Come on. They said he was stolen. The Romans, they don't carry the way. They just looking for the centurions because they put the centurions and they were supposed to seal that that stone and watch it. But the Pharisees, they're the ones that came. They were paying Romans off. Find them. Find them disciples and shut them up. Finally shut them up. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to shut them up. I heard they're all hiding in Jerusalem in some room. Sending people out to eat. You know, we need food. Can you imagine that day? And Jesus had to give them a different perspective. You guys are sitting in here thinking, Oh my God, this role that you can't say the Pledge of Allegiance, you can't mention God. And if you do, if you're Pentecost, if you speak in tongues, forget that. They think you're more toasted than a box of Wheaties. They think you're crazy. I speak in tongues every day, every night, many times in bed, sleeping while I'm sleeping. I woke my wife up praying in tongues, speaking and praying, praying. Seeking the face of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's my private way to talk with God. Amen. Amen. Many people think, well, if you do that, it'll it'll make people leave the church, you know? 
What a big lie. God's word. Anybody believe God's word? Yes. It says, it says, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit shall be assigned to the unbelievers. Yeah. It's not going to scare them away. It's going to make them say, man, what was that? Oh my goodness, that touched my heart. It seemed like he was talking to me. What was that? Somebody came up over here and said something, and somebody over there said something, and honey, that was us. Yeah. You think we're scaring them away? We're scaring Jesus right into it. We're validating the power of the Holy right. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Man. People are spreading rumors. People are saying he's dead. People are saying he's alive. People are saying he's walking around. Some people said two, two of the disciples said that they saw him today. He were walking with him, but they didn't even know they were walking with him on the Emmaus Road. And then they realized it was him. I mean, how can we believe all this? We saw him that day. There's no way you could live through what he went through. Yet it was him. And the first thing he said was peace. Peace I live with you. The second thing is perspective. Are you ready? An illustration. This is a true one, by the way. A scholar by the name of Dr. Harry Reimer. He had a friendly discussion with a Muslim teacher in which they compared their faith. Dr. Reimer says, for we believe that God has spoken to us by a book, the Bible. And the Muslim teacher said, well, we believe that God has spoken to us and revealed himself through the prophet, through the Quran. Good. I'll be with me. Perspective, man. Perspective, keep that word perspective, a different way to look at things. And then he said, we believe, a Muslim teacher, Reimer, Dr. Reimer then said, for we believe God has visited us on this planet through the person of Jesus Christ. The Muslim teacher goes on and said, we also believe that God has revealed himself to us through the prophet Muhammad. Dr. Reimer then said, for we believe that Jesus died for his people. And the Muslims said, we too believe that Muhammad died for his people. And Reimer added that, and we believe that Jesus Christ proved his claim by coming back and rising from the grave. Hallelujah. And the Muslim said, and the Muslim Imam said, we have not had record or heard anything from the prophet since his death. Anybody follow me? Look at the perspective. Yes, Lord. I've I've gone to see people. I've buried people. I've gone to see them in the hospital. Stage three, stage four cancer. uh, All kinds of things that I can't mention now, but just things that are diseases where you know it's going to be the end. And I see them smiling. Crying. Yet thinking, well, I can't. Touch my babies no more, but you know I can't. I gotta watch out what I drink from, and but 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 I'm still alive, Pastor Jim. And I tell them, do you know Jesus loves you? You can be a wonderful testimony. And you know what they have? They they smile. They're hurting, but they smile because they know that you can do what you want for me. Come on, you can hurt me, you can kill me, you can take my life away. But I shall we to be absent from this body is to be present in my life. You see, you see, I found out my perspective was, oh my God, you got AIDS, you're going to die. You can never have babies. But my perspective now is, is listen, if I die, I will be clean. I'll be healed. I'll be present with the Lord. I'll be healed. And we need to have that same kind of attitude. Stop being scared for God did not give us a spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind to be absent from this body or love our sight to be present with the Lord. You cannot scare me with death. Come on. Glory to God. My, my, my God. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. John 11, 25 and 26. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he 
shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Come on, Do you believe this? Yes. yes. That changes your perspective. Yes. Oh, we're scared. Oh, we're scared. People say that they're killing Christians. Oh, they're strapping bombs and they're killing Christians. Really? Strap whatever you want, baby. Because listen to me. If I leave, Debbie gets the insurance money and I go to see Jesus. Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. I let Ricky's got my fish tank. <laughs> now, I'm going to be buried with my suspenders. <laughs> So number one was what? Peace. God gives you peace. Peace in your heart. Don't be anxious no more. Tell them racing thoughts to slow down. Tell them anxiety settle down. Tell them thoughts about things and people that think they're racing in the middle of the night and keep them slowed down. Amen. And say, Jesus, give me your peace yes. in my heart Amen. that will guard my heart and my mind. Amen. 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 The second thing that he gives us is what? Perspective. 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 A completely different way of looking at things. Yes. Ships sink. <laughs> your Jesus rose from the dead, came and showed himself to everybody. Right. Our guy who revealed the Bible, we've not heard of him since he was buried. <laughs> <laughs> to the mass. Hello. Amen. He lives. Amen. The third thing I want to share with you is this. Is that when you have an encounter with Jesus, Jesus. the impact is that he changes your purpose. Yes. Yes. Purpose. Write that word down. Yes. Purpose. And put define next to it. Define. Find out exactly what it means. Purpose is a person's sense of resolve or determination. It's you or not, what, like, I'm resolved to do this. I'm going to do it. Sometimes we get caught in sin, and I'm going to get this no matter what I do. How many of us know about that? Yeah. I'm going to get this house. I'm going to get this to I'm going to get this girl. I'm going to get this boy. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I want this. I want it. I want it. I want it. And we will do anything, right? We'll lie. We'll steal. We'll connive. We'll cheat in order to get what we want, right? Can you imagine? If our purpose was that I will serve God, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be used in the gift. I want to be, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. My purpose. Take purpose a little further. Let me share this with you. Purpose is the reason for which something is created. And made. Why were you created? Why were you made? Why is it that Socrates and Plato and all these other famous people spent spent a half a century <coughs> speaking these great ideas and great ideas in philosophy, and yet our Jesus spent three, and we're still talking about it. Amen. I mean. I mean, we actually put ties on to come into the house of God today. Ties and shirts and put on our best and made, made ourselves look nice, right? Amen. Amen. Why is it? I mean, listen, was he always teaching? I think he was walking. There was no Santa buses. I think he was walking from town to town. Did you know that in Jesus' entire life, he never went more than 30 miles? Right. Hallelujah. In his whole life. And one of those was to Egypt. As a baby, he did go to Egypt. That's a theological question that they ask you. Did Jesus ever go to Egypt? Yes, he did. Yes, when, he did. Uh, when Joseph hid Mary and him there. Right. Follow me? Yeah, but even that includes the 30, uh, 30 miles. It's like saying, listen to me. I never left Allentown, yet I impacted the whole world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, and I didn't teach every day, every night, every minute, every hour, every boat, every mountain, every day, feeding every... No, he didn't. He was praying sometimes. Sometimes he was on the boat. Sometimes he was sleeping. Sometimes he was walking. Sometimes he was on the boat going to the other side to see the demonic man, right? I mean, cut that down to where, like, it wasn't three years of teaching, you know, expounding. Come on. 
It was just a couple of years of teaching, and the rest was traveling, getting there. Amen. Amen. Yet what an impact he had. Amen. You ready? Because that was his purpose. Let me show you what the impact was in, in, in verse 21 of the book of John. Are we still there? Yes. Take me to 21. It says, even as the Father sent me, so send I you. John chapter 11, verse 21. Am I correct or not? Is that it? 2021. Okay, is it John chapter what? John chapter 11, verses 20 and 21, right? <laughs> Turn to that, please, if you can get it on the screen. So, so far, what? If you have an impact with God, it's going to give you peace. If you have an impact with God, it's going to change your perspective. I'm not scared of death. death you can't scare me with death. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. I'm not scared of this anymore. Martha, Martha. When she heard that Jesus, Jesus, he was coming, she went and met him. But Mary still sat in the house. Amen. Martha therefore said, Jesus, Lord, if thou had only been here, my, my brother had not died. Amen. Do you understand that the purpose, the purpose for which Jesus left him, they used to think, that, listen to me, did you ever hear of a bell ringer? Back in the 16 and 1700s, they buried people. There are certain, right now, there are peppers in China that are, you can take and they paralyze you and slow your heart down. And you will look dead. They bury you. And you're alive. So what they would do in England, this is true. This is where we get it right. Man, he's a dead ringer. Man, he's a dead ringer of him. Really? Do you really know what that means? It means that inside they would put a bell and they'd have guys that would, that would live on site. They'd take care of the place, caretakers. And if they heard this at night, that means that the guy that's in there woke up. <laughs> Anybody follow me? For real. A bell ringer. Man, he's a dead ringer. Man, that guy's a dead ringer, I would think. Dead ringer, that means no. It, 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 it means he's like, whoa! Ding, 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 ding. Somebody would come up and say, get him out. Come on. Get him out. And they have a little pipe, a little rope, and a cheap little bell. Anybody follow me? A dead ringer. What would change your perspective, man, that Jesus finally dies, he comes back, he shows himself to you, he shows you what your true purpose is. As the Father sent me, no, uh, I send you, verse 21. I want you to see the transformation that took place. The, uh, the disciples at this point, listen to me, listen up, so I don't feel like I left the train here. They were, they were, they were a disillusioned. They were scared. They were, they were thinking all the worst. They were thinking these Romans and these Pharisees are going to come. They're going to lock us up. They're going to kill us too. This is the end of Jesus. I wonder what that was. Was it really Jesus? Was it him? And him and Peter said it was. It was. It was the Son of God. I said it to him once. And he said to me, Peter, man did not show this to you, but this was revealed to you by the Son of God, by the Spirit of God himself. Right? And he said, I, I know it was him. I know it was him. I know it was him. But listen to me. What happened? Their purpose. When they saw Jesus, their purpose changed. Yeah. Come on, man. My purpose is not to die. My purpose is not to hide in a room. My purpose is not to be quiet. My purpose is to even as the Father sent me, so send I you. If you get in my way, I'm going to invite you to church. Last night, I went to dinner at some friend's house. And when I was coming out, this lady came out of the door cussing. Am I right or wrong? Cussing. She was cussing, trying to light her cigarette. And, and I said, I said, I, I said, really? On Good Friday and Holy Saturday? I said, you need to come to church tomorrow. I don't know if she's here, but I know I spent time inviting her. I said, you know what? You know what? You know what? I just came out of the house, but, but, but my purpose is that if you are lost, I want you to be found. If you are lost, my purpose, my purpose is that because he saved me, I save anybody that gets in front of my face. 
I leave them, listen, I don't care if they accept it now, but I let them know what happened to me. She even said, I'm sorry I cursed in front of you, Reverend. I said, don't be sorry, you can curse all you want. Just come to church tomorrow. Amen. We'll take care of all that. <laughs> but your purpose changes, man. Anybody hear what I mean? Your reason for being changes. Amen. These men were scared, hiding in a room, mom. And now their reason for being changed because they saw the Lord. The impact of the Lord showing himself to them changed them. Yes. Amen. Yes. Follow me. Amen. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Number four. And the final one. Debbie, if you want to come up and give her a seat, that's something we promised our friends. All of you. <laughs> Anybody been watching the series on, on, on O.J. Simpson and the rocking album? Everybody's been, no, absolutely not. I've been, watching, <laughs> I've been watching War Room every day. <laughs> Anybody been watching? I've been watching because I remember going, okay, me and two people, okay, all the rest of us are just either just very holy or liars. <laughs> Anybody see any of it at all? Anybody see the commercial? Yes. Well, the big thing back then was that they first learned about DNA. Yes. You get me? They learned about DNA. They said, your DNA is here. Your DNA is at the car. Your DNA is at the crime scene. Your DNA is mingled with their blood. Their blood is mingled with your blood. DNA proves that you were here. It proves, listen, they said one out of 177 million people that you were here. Who do you think is there? <laughs> right? I, I don't care how you feel about the case, but they were trying to show that DNA, that residue that stays behind from your hair, from a follicle, from skin, from blood, from skin tissue, from your nails, it shows you're the one that was here. This matches you per It doesn't match anybody else but you. Come on, Pastor. I'm excited too. <laughs> Are you ready? He left his DNA behind. Jesus, when you get impacted by Jesus, he's going to give you peace. He's going to give you perspective and change. He's going to give you a purpose for living. Saying, listen, I'm not dead. I'm very much alive. And then the last thing he gives you is going to give you power. Because if you're just a scared man in the room and you show me a scar, I'm like, okay, all right. All right, are we getting fish today? <laughs> right? I'm just I'm like, okay, but I'm still a little scared of the world, right? But when you empower me, yes. dunamis, mm. power is dunamis. Dunamis means dynamite. Dynamite means explosion. You follow me? Yes. yes I told the people here last week, I said, I saw when they had the, the shooting up here that they took one guy who had drove somebody in a van and they they immediately put his hands in two bags and tied them up. Yeah. I thought, why? Well, they don't know if he's right-handed or left-handed, but they wanted to find out, is there any residue That's of right. gunpowder? You see, if you shot a gun, it's going to show up on your hand. They just swab it, they say, he shot a gun. Anybody follow me? Amen. There's no gunpowder around in your car, in your ashtray, you shot a pistol. Right? Come on. And so they were looking for the residue to prove that he was there. Well, today we're looking for the residue to prove that Jesus was here with you. Yeah. Yeah. I call it the residue of righteousness. Yes. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Where the righteous God it shows that, that when he resurrected, I was so on board yeah. with loving him, with having a purpose, that some of the residue stayed behind on me. Yes. Anybody with me? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Residue of righteousness. I wrote down a little note for Is the endowment or the capacity or the ability to accomplish something or the potential to act in a certain way. There you go. Let me give that to you again, all right? It's not mine, it's from Miriam Webster. 
<laughs> but a residue of righteousness mm -hmm. is the presence of God mm -hmm. in you, mm -hmm. proving the endowment, mm -hmm. the capacity, or ability to accomplish something or the potential to act in a certain way mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the impact. That's the final impact. The dunamis is the power. Well, how the power? This is where we're going to take it a little deeper. You ready? I haven't used these. I just used some scattered ones I had on my pad. You with me? For the Holy Spirit gives us power in our weakness because we do not have the power in ourselves to live a victorious life. Anybody believe with that? And, uh, verse 22, and when he said this, he breathed on them and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody follow me? Yes. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. Jesus, in his resurrection, he makes an impact. And he showed it to us on the day of Pentecost. He said on the day of Pentecost, there were as though fire tongues. Some people say today, well, why isn't there fire today, Pastor Jimmy? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Woo! Good question. Hallelujah. I have an answer. Come on. <laughs> Good question, though. I heard somebody tell me, I said, oh, I was in a service and oh, I could see the fire right on everybody. I knew she was a crackpot. <laughs> Wait a minute, just let me just show you what I mean. Come on, Pastor. According to the Levitical law, not strange fire, strange fire will kill you. But when God, if you offered a sacrifice and it was worthy, God's fire would come down the light of mine. So he was showing what these people are doing, being here in one accord, being here waiting for me, being in dude, waiting for me to breathe on them. Mm. Woo! I'm validating that. I have to God validated every time I do it. I did it once. The Holy Spirit in you is the power, is the dynamite, is the purpose, is the power to live a Christian life. You don't have to be locked up hiding in a room no more because he is alive. You are alive. Because he has power. He's given it to you, he said. And he breathed on them. He said, receive. Receive the residue of my righteousness. Right here, right now, you got resurrection power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit gives us power because he knows that we can't live a victorious life on our own. He knows that. We're not going to be able to live a victorious life on our own. He says, the only way you're going to be able to do this is if you're empowered. Hold that for me. It's a door stop for somebody. I'll give it away if you get that person. <laughs> Second, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Of dunamis. Power. And of love. And of a sound mind. Sound mind is peace. Yes. Of love means that you've got a new purpose, and of power means that you've got a brand new potential. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus didn't put it in here, but if he would have, he would have put a welcome to the gun show. <laughs> Jesus is here right now, folks, in this room. There's the proof, scripture. Who believes in the word of God? Amen. Okay. okay. So he says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. Give me two gentlemen to take my, take that pulpit, take that up. Thank you, Jesus. So here's my point. If there's anybody here, you know, there's people that we call them either priesters, priesters. They come at Christmas and Easter. Priesters. <laughs> Right? <laughs> the little boy comes in with his father. They sit through a service. It's an hour and a half long. The kid says to him, Daddy, how'd you like it? He's talking to some other way. He said, Oh my gosh, I don't believe they sang those songs. They're like, What? I mean, how old could those hymns have been? Like, my goodness. And then he preached on and on. He told these jokes. I still don't get them. 
And it was like all this, I mean, my goodness. And then he preached on. And then he's alive, too. He's alive. I know he's alive. And I said, really? He called the reverend alive? Of course he's alive. He said every time. He, he said 20 times. He said, uh, this is my last point. And he kept going. He kept going. <laughs> I'm in the red body. And he kept going. He said, this is finally. And he kept going. It was another 20. I'm looking at my watch. He went on and on and on. He, he said, the, the guy's a liar. They just honor the same song. He says, my goodness, sir. Oh, man, I was just sick of it. And his little son next to him said, Daddy, what did you expect for a quarter? Kids will put it to you, won't they? <laughs> perspective of your own self. You're always caught up and you don't have peace in your mind because you're always jogging around how to make things work. And Jesus is the only one that will make them work for you. And you need that power from him and the perspective from him. I want to ask you if you don't know Jesus, if you've lost him, <laughs> you can find him right where you lost him. At, at an altar. Amen. Right where you lost him. And you walked away from the altar, you left him, you go walk right back yes. again. Amen. A man or woman, I don't play these out. On the count of three. <laughs> right up there. I, I'm doing that. Just, I, I think men and women, if you need to get right with God, could you stand up and come here and meet me? Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on, give them a hand. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
I want you to pray with me. Let's say, Father in heaven, I come before you. I confess my sins. I know I've done wrong. Please forgive me. In your word it says, John and 1 9. If I confess my sins, my God is faithful. He will forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, I know you. I've known you close. I've known you far. I've walked deep. And sometimes I've walked away. Father in heaven, right now, this moment, this second, this Easter, I rededicate my life to you. Come into my life right now. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And reconcile my family. Reconcile my home. Reconcile my children. Reconcile my work. Reconcile my relationships. I will give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. Stay right there. Come on, I want you to pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you will use me more. That you will use me and cleanse me and strengthen me. Empower me by your precious Holy Spirit. Give me a boldness. Give me courage to stand for what I believe in. And never, ever, ever to be ashamed. I thank you, Father. Let your power dwell in me. Breathe. Breathe a fresh anointing in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. And here's what I want you to do. Right here. I want you to just roll through. I want you to think. Just come on. Come on this way. And you may go this way. And I want you to start praying for people. Come on in. Come on over. Everybody. Come on over. Surrounded by your glory. 